Right, hello, welcome to this week's update of Amberton on Sea. Um, all I'm doing at the moment is putting a, a very thin layer of play sand at the, uh, to represent the bed of the river. Um, just a thin layer. Let this dry hard. It's just neat PVA, PVA glue underneath. Then I'll put another little layer on top, which I'll soak in with diluted PVA and wash up liquid. Uh, leave that for a fair few days to completely dry off. And then what I'll do then, I'll put different shades of uh, colouring on top of the sand. Obviously the darker the, the shade, the deeper the river will represent. And obviously the, the lighter end will represent the, uh, the embankments and that. So, let's see how we get on with this. Okay, what I've done, I've mixed all my polyfiller into a, a creamy paste. Uh, it's going to paint this onto the hillside now and um, it'll strengthen everything up a lot better. I say it stretches and contracts quite easy without cracking. So it's ideal for external use and for models in sheds. Right, just uh, simply just paint it on. All you gotta do, and you get the general idea. Right. Fortunately, I haven't got anything like Blue Peter, where they say, and here's one I prepared earlier. So I'll switch this camera off, and I'll just carry on, and I'll show you the finished. Ignore the blue sky, it's still drying out. So a lot of drying to do in here because it's quite cold and damp. Um, that's basically with all the polyfiller on. That's one bag of polyfiller. And that's about all it does. I mean, on the outside section, I use ten bags of the stuff, possibly eleven. Um, but I say that is one bag. That's your idea. Right, um, what I'm doing is filling the embankments up with sand, um, doing this in stages so you, you add PVA glue and dilute put PVA glue to it so it uh, sticks it down rock hard. As you can see that's what I'm doing here, just, just filling it up and then rolling it flat and then on the, um, on the bit of wall here we'll put some um, like paving just on top, just on the edge. Uh, as you can see the riverbed is uh, drying out. I've um, added some, some pebbles to the base. Uh, these will probably come out once the bridge is put all the water in and gone rock hard. And I'll take these out and then I'll build uh, the sand and the gravel around. But it's not looking too bad. I've painted the base coat of the uh, hill. I've got to add some lot of browns to it. This is just the under, undercoat if you like. I'm add a lot of a lot more colours to it to tone it right down. It's just to stop the uh, the white from poking through because when you put static grass on, um, you can you can't always get as thick as you like, especially on, on the hills. But I've got a lot of uh, hecky rock to go on there eventually <laughs> when I get round to it. Uh, the sky is more or less matching that sky now. Just got to pull the clouds on. And then um, what's really holding up at the moment is that I need the sand to dry right out and then paint it. So I'll hoover it off then paint it. And then put the bridge in place once the water's gone rock hard. That's what's holding everything up. It's cold weather, it's taken a, a long time. As you can see, all I've done is soak the um, sand to allow the P diode PVA just to soak in on both sides. It will probably sink down a bit more, so I'll add, I'll add some more. Then all this light here will be covered in, in sand and glued down. And then all the foliage and scatter material will be put on top, just to allow a little line um, for a little track just to walk 
under the arches and the same this side but as a, a small um, road track you know up to the up to where the mill is that's the general plan Well, I've just gone over the, uh, the green and put some brown on top. Uh, just to darken it down and then I'll put some, maybe some other greens on top just before I uh, add the hecky rock and stuff like that. Just gives you a general idea, really, doesn't it? Right, what I've done is just put the, uh, just put the sand down uh, with a I think you call it a bridle path or something like that, will go down. Uh, so it'll be better as wide as your finger if that. Uh, we'll just put the whole lot down, just covers the wood up. Uh, same as the other side, this will have a, a two track going up, just to uh, represent where the, the road vehicles have been and uh, also where the mill is. Yeah, had to cover, cover it that great, because so it's going to have all the scatter materials and stuff like that all on top of it anyway. So. They look quite good when it's all done. Just gotta let it all completely dry out and then uh, I'm ready to go. Okay, I've applied all the PVA glue. Um, just gotta let it all dry out now. It's gonna take a good couple of days to dry this out. Um, there's a bit of a sticking point waiting for the river bed to, be, to get sorted. Uh, once it is sorted, we'll. Uh, a static grass, I'll put some more green on there, some dark green, uh, get a static grass on, get the mod rock on, the, not the mod rock, the um, hecky rock in place, It'll look really really nice when it's done, and then we'll move across, and, uh, got to sort out a new tunnel portal to go there, uh, you have to scratch and build something, um, I'll have a look, look, look on the web, see what's, uh, what it looks like, I find some kind of uh, a castle themed, um, Tunnel portal. Uh, I think it looked really nice. It's not a whole castle, it's just a small thing that represents once what the Victorians did, wasn't it? Um, that'll be it. And then I say we can get the track down. That'll all be the uh, same type of track as this. It's where it's all um, elevated, so everything leans into the curves. I'll do the same here. Uh, I may do it a little bit differently. It's obviously been a bit of a tight curve. I'm gonna. Lean, try and lean the locos a little bit more on the elevated sections of the, uh, of the track. It's just so we can just lean, just tilt a bit. This allows him to go around a bit smoother, look a bit more prototypical rather than just laying the track dead flat. Um, it works quite well down here. We've got all my fish vans there at the moment. I'm um, collecting and they've already weathered up. Uh, I've got a new Compressor with a, a tank on top and that, well, a tank on the bottom, compressor on top, it just allows you to use the um, pressure better rather than losing pressure when you're airbrushing. So that should work out fine when we'll I start uh, going back to weathering the locos and uh, wagons again, hopefully. Won't be this year though. Well, I don't very much if this will be finished this year. We've had a good couple of warm days, but it's not been too bad. So that's going to be rabbiting on and uh, doing an update next week.